There we go. Hi, and welcome to the Right Now Show. This is episode 12, and we are your hosts, Joanna Bartlett. And Julie Dunn. We're not streaming live today. We are still at Tsunami Books, as you can see. But we're not streaming live because I have run out of data on my cell plan for the month due to one of my lovely children who decided to watch about two gigs worth of YouTube videos early it in our plan month. The season of YouTube. <laughs> and they got a new phone and we did not, um, you know, turn it, turn it down, turn it off, make it not, make that bit not happen. I can't think of the right words which we did on the old phone. And so I have three more days in my plan until the data resets and then I can use it all again because it's my data. I was gonna say, we were just gonna uh, tell you guys we're, we're changing our subscription. So if you want VIP status, you have to come here for it live. <laughs> That'd be good. But, um, but no, we'll just, we're going no, to. No, we, uh, we just ran out of data. And we usually use Valerie's phone. And as you've noticed, she's not here. She's not invisible. She's just not here. She's recovering from the Oregon Country Fair. Country Fair. And yep. almost said county. Gosh. Well, she, we should totally link because it's an amazing festival of the arts. It's, yes. It's just, there are things there you, you won't see anywhere else. Some of which is fortunate, especially while you're eating, <laughs> perhaps, as mm -hmm. I like to we play country fair bingo. Free um, free boob painting, apparently. Haven't and done it, but it's. Thong man. Thong man. Thong? What is thong man? Oh, just men walking around. Oh, in yes, thongs the while men in thongs. And tutus. I like the tutus, I think they're great. Anyway. Tutus and the thongs. Nothing to do with writing. So thanks for joining us again for episode 12. It is July 16th, 2018. And today we're going to be talking about the financial costs of self publishing. Yay. Mm. Or independent, indie publishing, as I like to call it. Indie. Because it sounds cooler. Like if you're an indie musician, you're it like is. bucking the establishment as opposed to like self published. You couldn't yeah. find anybody else to I publish me. Saw this. Um, this headline article, I think it was about Taylor Swift, and it was mm -hmm. like, oh, she's dating this indie musician, and I was like, well, can we get headlines about authors like that? Authors dating, dating. indie <laughs> author. Yes. Mm. We have to find some superstars to date, though. Our husbands Think. may not like that. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. But we'll see, but think of the mm. book sales, honey. Mm. It'll be worth it. So <laughs> this is our check-in time. Um, so how's your last week, how's your week been? What have you been up to in the writing? In the writing scheme. Oh. So I, um, I probably got a total of a page written. So it was like, it was kind of disheartening because I would literally get like three sentences done and not be able to go on. And so it's been kind of hard on those times that I'm doing anything else to like give myself the freedom to do anything else. Yeah. And then today I'm watering the garden and I see this bug and we've been having this problem with these little yellow bugs that look like ladybugs. Mm -hmm. They're not ladybugs and they're evil and you have to kill them because they eat your crop. So I see this bug and it looks like a ladybug. The evil yellow ladybugs. <laughs> they are. They're not actually ladybugs but I forget what they're called. And it has absolutely no dots on it. It's mm -hmm. just like this little red dot and I got ready to smush it and I look closer and I'm like, oh my god, that ladybug is so little, so young, that it has no dots on it. Mm -hmm. And I've never they're, seen they're, they're it. I've always seen one with like at least a little tiny dot Do they on grow it. more dots as they get older? Yeah, you, they get a dot for every year. Really? Mm -hmm. No way. So I, yeah, I'm like pretty eight sure. year old ladybugs. They yeah. can't live that long. Why not? I don't know. They're insects. They look, insects don't live that long, do they? Some, right? Mm. I don't know. Haven't written a book about it. Didn't do the research. <laughs> don't know. Yeah. <laughs> right? It's the next Marvel comic, you guys. Ladybug lady. man. <laughs> it's gonna be a man. Ladybug woman. Eh, make it a man. Maybe it could be a non-binary character. As a ladybug. I don't know. Why not? Mm. Anyway, you saw this ladybug. What so, does this have to do with writing? <laughs> exactly. What? I don't know. Everything in my life seems to do with writing in some way. It could. And I, I you, my thing for seeing this ladybug with no dots would be uh -huh. like wanting and wanting and waiting for that dot. And then you finally get the dot. 
And then you're like, that ladybug has more dots than me, and it's prettier, and I want more dots. And why can't I have more dots instead of just enjoying the process of getting your dots? You know the ladybugs don't worry about those things. It's just us. It's just us that worries about how many dots we have or not. <laughs> and how so we should strive more to be like the ladybug. To be like, eh, dots, no dots, whatever, I'm doing my thing. It's true. We'd be much better off if we just hung out and didn't. Like, no, if we just did what we, we needed to do for ourselves and didn't worry about whatever. Yes. If we could stop comparing ourselves to other people yeah. or even to ourselves in the past and all the nonsense we get up to. Well, I did no writing work. I did no work this last week at all, really, because um, my two youngest kids, my biological kids, went off to their dance on Saturday in upstate New York for the next six weeks. And so I spent the week just being with them and getting stuff done around the house and surviving my son's 13-year-old sleepover birthday party. Whoa. Wait. <laughs> How <laughs> many 13-year-old boys are we talking about? We only ended up with four. That's... And so that was reasonable. We were, were going to have like five yeah. or six or some number. Fortunately, it was limited because we went to the virtual reality place, and you can have a maximum of six people there. Like we rented the whole place for an hour, wow. and um, so we would only have ever had a maximum of six. Okay, and then a couple That's a couple didn't show up. Doable. Or one couldn't, and then one couldn't stay overnight. So it was only four total. They still did not go to sleep till three thirty a.m. Um, I ended up getting woken up by Duncan looking for batteries for the Wii remote and I, at 1.30 I came downstairs and they said you do not need more batteries, you need to go to sleep now. And so I made them, I had like put them to bed. Like, like teenagers, you know, get out the sleeping bags and the pillows and I turned off the light so that they could maybe fall asleep an hour or two later. So I spent, the, um, I spent an entire day doing that, just, you know, and then cooking and then, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sleepovers are so much work for the parents. Well, that That's, kind of uh, Usually, <laughs> I make the kids, I mean mom sleepover, I make the kids go to sleep by the time I go to bed. It's mm -hmm. lights out, so that's like 10 o'clock because... <laughs> I don't go to bed very late, but um, by the time I go to bed, it's lights out. You need to be going to sleep. You actually lights out usually usually at nine o'clock, so that they are asleep at ten. Yeah. I've actually gone and like if they've had them in the basement, sat on the basement steps and waited for them to stop talking. I said, "No, it's time to go to sleep now. You're not because you know some kids are just going to stay up till two a.m. and do God knows what in your house." I am. And so I've just sat there until I've heard even deep breathing, and then I've gone to bed because I am a killjoy as a mother. It turns out, and I know what I got up to on sleepovers as a teenager. So, <laughs> and I know how much my children can be like me. See, you're just you're building story for your stories. There I you mean, go. that's just awesome material for. Yeah, middle grade. So actually, the one writing thing I did was because I've been hosting um, the Be Write In online write ins with Wordcrafters on Tuesdays at 1 o'clock from 1 to 2.30 Pacific time. Is that was actually recommended to me by another writer friend. Oh, in that's town cool. That's awesome. Who did not know that I already knew about it. So that was kind of cool that it came back yeah. around. Oh, and nice. there's word getting out. I did some, I wrote, I finished writing a blog post on um, dry mouth for a dentist that I do content marketing for. That's the brilliant writing piece I did was a blog post about dry mouth. But we're in Oregon, so I thought dry mouth was totally related to some other kind of article. Um, I do mention that as a cause for dry mouth. That would be smoking marijuana, mm. or any use of marijuana, I suppose. However you get it into your body, I think, would can have the same side effect. Figure we're in Oregon, I should probably include that in the article. Yes. <laughs> Maybe we'll get some hits that way. Anyway. That's true, so, that's marketing. Yeah, whatever, it's fine. They're a very non-judgmental dental practice. They're great, so they're not, they're not gonna care. <laughs> Our main topic today is the financial costs of independent publishing that we could talk about probably for hours because it is a big, I mean, there's a lot to include. So what we thought yeah. we What would, does it cost you to go indie? <laughs> yeah. We thought we'd kind of break it down into kind of an overview of the costs and then what you need to include if you want to go bare bones and spend as little as money as possible and then maybe like what going full out super pro would look like. 
So I made a little list of, of awesome. kind of the overview of the costs. So I broke it down into you know this editing costs, right? Whether or not you choose to pay an editor to mm -hmm. and proofreader essentially, or editing can cover a whole bunch of things. It can be developmental editing, um, where it's more about the overall scope you know of the book and does the plot work do the characters work is there enough transformation for non for fiction and then non-fiction you know, does your book make sense do you, are, are your ideas fully fleshed out well, there's line editing which is more about your the, the the nuts and bolts of the words and line editing and another kind often get kind of used in the same context mm -hmm. together Copy editing, I think. Yeah. Copy editing, line yeah. editing can be different, can be the same thing. I call them the same it thing. It depends on, um, I think, who, what source you're looking at prices from. Because yeah. every editor will be like, well, if they have the content, they have the and it's line. Like the word and, the and, and then there's proofreading, like, which is kind of the lightest <clears throat> form of editing. And that's really just finding your typos, your misplaced commas, and. Um, you know, incorrect words, incorrect uses of words, um, finding your there, there, and there's. Oh yes, you know my, the things my that editor spell check doesn't catch. Takes my um, clutch words and she replaces them words with her own. <laughs> like so, eventually her her clutch words will become my clutch words. Maybe but taking out all the uses of very uh, and then mm -hmm. and. I, I just switches them up and I'm like, oh, I like that, thank you. Or sometimes I leave them and put it you in the other one. You put know. a few in throughout, but I think I cut um, when I was working on my memoir and getting it to the stage where I wanted to send it to agents, so as proofreading, I cut out about a thousand words from it. Just by from taking all your just by taking out all those like stupid useless words, you know, like very mm -hmm. and then and mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. and I have a list of them somewhere that I just did find and find and delete in that case yeah. for a lot of them that they, they were not needed they were just like extra bulk so and they made it up until that stage they did it. yeah so there's, they there's cost of editing there's uh, formatting so whether you are publishing an ebook or a print book you're gonna need to format the thing and so you yes. can either do, do that yourself two totally different yeah formatting very different too or you can pay someone or a service to do that for you. Mm -hmm. um, then there's like your back cover blurb, which you actually need to have before you publish the thing. You need to get that thing written because it goes on the cover and it goes in your book description. You know, if you're online, or anywhere oh, you're yeah. selling it online, yeah. or even like if, like yeah. you were saying, at your um, at Comic Con, since you're kind of pitching your book to random strangers, yeah. um, you need to have that quick little. Mm -hmm. hook to get them interested What the hell in are your books about? And so you can certainly do this yourself, but you can also pay people to do it as well. Then there's cover design for e your ebook, whether it's your ebook or your print book, it needs to have a cover designed. Um, and then there's publishing, potential publishing costs, including purchasing ISBN numbers, getting an LCN number, actually, which is free, but it is another step, which yes. is your Library of Congress control number. Which you have to do before the book is published. Yes. And whether or not you want to purchase a CIP data block, which is oh, your cataloging publication data block, which is that thing that goes in the front of the book, um, so that libraries can more easily index your book, and if they can do that, then they're more likely to purchase it and stock it. Oh, and copyrights, yes, yeah, if copyright. you want to copyright your book or not. Then there's the marketing of your book, and advertising. So those are all the fun <laughs> costs, just the overview of the costs that can be involved in independently publishing your book. That's not including events. Oh, then if you want literary yeah, events. Events for like a whole other cost because yes. you have so many other categories in that. You have your marketing and your, your yeah. table cost and your room and your travel and your... It goes on and on. You cannot write off your clothes, you guys. No. You can write off pretty much everything else on your taxes, but not your clothes. Mm -hmm. um, so where are you? Are you like in the bare bones end of the spectrum or the full out super pro? So when I first decided to go indie, um, I started looking at the cost of everything. Mm -hmm. And one of my main reasons for that drew me to indie publishing was full control of my design my mm -hmm. cover my control. yes yeah. control. 
I must have the remote control. <clears throat> I, I, I accept that I have a lot of control issues <laughs> in life. I really do. I'm just becoming more and more aware of it. I've been discovering this about myself. He's like, hmm, maybe I need to work on that. Yeah, I'm hmm. working on the whole surrender to yes. like life oh, yes. and my highest good. And That's funny that you say that because sh our birthdays are very close and we're both Aquarius and I have a lot of those issues. Oh, so it's part of my genius, I like yes, to think. Yes, um, yes. So I went <laughs> indie and and everything you read says do not design your own book cover don't do it yeah. and i was like screw it you guys i know how to photoshop and let's do this and i was doing it and it was kind of like i mean you're creating something so mm. it's like the whole creating process of writing which if you don't have to create your book covers it's like writing in a different format mm -hmm. <laughs> and you're like you get to these points where you're like oh my god what am i doing and um, so for me, the cost of cover, I just had to pay for the photos and my time. But yeah. I mean, you're paying for your time. Yeah, that to is a have cost. a decent. It's something to consider, especially yeah. depending on what else you do with your life. Like if you have a another job, for instance, or a business, or whatever it is that you're, you know, if you're not other than writing then not that even if you're only writing your time is free but not all worthless or not but you know it's 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 your time it's a, and it could yeah. be have a financial cost or cost, yes if, because if it you're not doing other work mm -hmm. that you w would otherwise be doing and you know i think it really depends on the person and their ability there are definitely people that should not design their own book covers oh yeah that's true i probably should design my own book covers but i do but because I, I also i have not i don't have a degree in graphic design but I certainly have a lot of work experience um, mm. that other people have paid me for um, to, in graphic design and using Photoshop and InDesign and all of that and so I think you know if, if you're smart about it you can design your covers yourself and do them well if you have enough technical skill and you have kind of that innate design skill and also you're willing to do the research to look at book covers in your genre in the you know it's one of like why, why people keep going to Amazon to do research is because you and can the see books. the top selling books in your genre what do they look like hmm. because you don't want your book to look completely different from what's selling really well. You want it to fit in because readers really do judge a book by its cover and make a lot of decisions. I make decisions on whether to buy books by their covers and I should know better. But I do it anyway because I'm human. Yeah. And we like shortcuts. And like that sounds good? Does it look good? Yeah, like do I like the name? Do I like mm -hmm. you know, do I like the title of it? Do I um do I like the cover? And probably the author name has something to do with it. Oh. That'd, be Which is, That'd be a fun episode. We should talk about that at some point. That's interesting that you say that because um, I've been researching numerology a lot lately. Mm. And the author was talking about how um, the title of your book might matter because the frequency that the numbers give off um, will have different <laughs> cause and effects, say. But... I have not been ambitious enough to check yeah. the numerology of my books yet. I, I took a note. We'll talk about that in another episode. Um, yeah, but there are certainly people who should not be designing their own book covers. And so what I did was I, my first ones, yeah, I, I bought bought the... Like a stock cover. Like a stock, stock Images. Photo. Like I would have this idea and so I bought the images and I, you know, messed around and created a book cover. And several book colors, covers, and then fortunately, I have a friend who is um, who's just really good at designing good book covers. She just likes it. She thinks it's fun, and she yeah, kind of like yeah. gets it. And so, after it was actually after I had several books, a couple books, two or three books published, maybe and one more coming out. Um, I already had the first Led by Light out, which had a different different font on it. Mm -hmm. She sat down with me. We came up with a font. She, like we came up with a look and feel for my books that works and that I've stuck with ever since. So they're all like branded the same because right. they all have the same font, same, you know, different different images on the covers and everything. Right. But, so I feel a lot better about them. Yeah. Now, and I actually had one cover professionally designed. My, I did the original cover for Butterfly Buddies was my non-fiction, mm -hmm. non my fiction uh, kids novel. 
and I knew it wasn't great, but it was like the best I could do at the time. And so well, that's I, something to stop and point out is that it's the best you can do at the time. Yeah, and you, you know? can change covers. And I actually had a, I had somebody redesign it for me, and I paid actual money for that. And I have not recouped the cost of that because I don't sell any copies of that book. But that's fine. I feel better about the cover now. So um, yeah, and so with covers, you can. Yeah, you can change it at any point in time. Um, There's a couple, I've um, read about a couple different indie authors who have changed their book covers mm -hmm. to see how they would sell different. Yeah. And uh, one person, it made a huge yep. difference. And so that's always something that's worth playing around with once you've got your book out there. It's not like, um, you know, independently publishing, you're doing print on demand, whether you're going through... Um, Amazon or Ingram or and if you're doing if it's just an ebook I mean so easy to change the, the cover because it's, it's oh, just yeah, a it's digital just... file it changes instantly but even for um, print books it does change instantly because the very next book that gets ordered and printed will have a new cover on it and so that's something that you should at least should I don't know what you should do you should do what feels best to you yes yeah, so you can get like a really decent looking book cover made for about, I'd say, a hundred bucks. Um, or two, yeah, I think I paid like two fifty. Yeah, for my, the one I yeah. did. So I mean, like that. you know, so try it out. And my first couple go heads sucked. I had it on my my author Facebook page. I gave people a choice because mm. people love choices. So I was like, okay, I'll just put it out there. And and I did three different book covers and I pulled them. And the, the one that I was going to do um, ended up being on the back oh. because the pool pulled more yeah. towards yeah. a different thing. And that's thing. something you can do too is design a few different covers if you're going to do it yourself and pull whether you, if you don't have a author page, you can just, you know, if you do have a Facebook page or just friends and family or whoever, we're, we're smiling right. at the super cute baby who's crawling around in the background and squealing. Um, you can poll people and actually take their opinion, you know, seriously because how people react to your cover is what how people are going to react to your cover. So, do you? Yeah. What about editing? Do you pay for editing, proofreading? Oh, that? I do pay for an editor. Um, I sprinkle commas sometimes. My sprinkling's getting better, but you know, I got a comma sprinkle problem, and she puts them where they should be. That's good. <laughs> So, I I have um, researched different editors, mm -hmm. and I go with the most cost efficient for me. Yeah. Um, because I got another quote, and they wanted like eighteen hundred for my buck, and I was like, how long is it going to take me to recoup that? Yeah. Although it is also not unreasonable right in many ways because right. I do I don't I have not at the moment but I've done professional book editing right and I'm not cheap yeah I she's mean, not I, cheap if I'm if I'm <laughs> you're paying me even like fifty dollars an hour sixty dollars an hour yeah. to I mean I, I go fast I work really fast but still you can only get through so many words yeah in a in such you know so long a period of time and really be looking at it and be thinking about it deeply and oh, yeah. noticing and mm -hmm. and I'm well I'm a terrible editor in a way in the sense that no I have a really hard time separating out those levels of editing mm -hmm. uh, I can I can I will just proofread if somebody's paying me just to proofread I may make notes about like this does this part just doesn't really make sense right. to me but I won't do like a developmental edit or, or a line edit yeah. um, I always wonder. So I proofread while I line edit. That's what. I, those are the two I mix together. If I'm doing this full copy edit, line edit on something, I also end up proofreading and moving the commas and doing the typos and all of that because I see them. I can't right. help it. Yeah. I see it on That's signs. what I was wondering. I see it you know, if you're reading something, how can you not like just make comments about like as if I, I'm editing it? You know. I try so. and stop myself. And if I'm doing a developmental edit, I really try hard. Sometimes I'll just say you're overusing this word right. way too much. Like yeah. it's things that really pop up for me, I'll, I'll do it. So I have not, I paid for my memoir for a um, developmental edit for it, which I haven't actually done anything with yet. And I should because it was, you know, 750 bucks or something. But um, but it was really, it was worthwhile feedback. I'm really glad I did it. Um, 
and but for my published books, my nonfiction, I've had I've had other people read them. I've had my students read them, which has been really helpful. And I also use them in my classes to teach classes. And so um, I cheat in the sense that you know I get the book out and publish it, and then use it to teach a class. And um, then I tell my students, you know, because we I use it, you know, like this this week you read chapters, you know, one and two. I tell them at the beginning of class. Whoever finds the most typos in the book gets a gold star. And so I will have like one or two students who will like read it for typos and proofread it. And they'll come in and I'm like, I found a typo on page 46. I'm like, oh good. And I write it down and I go fix it. That's awesome. <laughs> so that's what yes. I, I mean, I make it as clean as possible, obviously, before I publish it. And I, um, and I do all my proofreading myself, you know, and so I will read the book literally from back to front. Um, starting like line by line or sentence by sentence so that it gets it out of your, you know, it's not what you're expecting it to say, you're really reading the words for the words mm -hmm. and do different tricks like that to, um, you know, but again, I, ha I am a professional writer and I have about, you know, for like the last like, 20 years or something almost. Um, I have been doing writing and you know where the commas go, right? And copy editing and yeah. all of that in a professional capacity for most of that time. So I feel very confident in my writing ability, um, and when I actually work really hard at it, I believe I produce a good, clean manuscript. But if that's not you, if you don't have that attention to detail, I mean, yeah, get certainly if you have, if you know an English teacher. A retired English teacher. My mother-in-law is a retired English teacher, and I have a friend who teaches English as a second language um, at U of O. And so you get those people to read your manuscripts, and they will sometimes point out things that aren't actually incorrect in English. <laughs> what are you writing? <laughs> um, but it can be worthwhile. And then so the things I do spend money on in publishing are making um, the book as professional looking as possible mm -hmm. and looking as much like a traditionally published book as possible, which for me means purchasing my own ISBNs and not using like a CreateSpace ISBN. I never want my book to say that CreateSpace is the publisher of it. I'm the publisher of it. <laughs> like I'm, yes. If yes. I'm going to be independent and be in control, it's going to have my publishing company on it. Yeah. That could just be an Aquarius control issue. Maybe. Or oh, whatever. But, yeah. Um, you know, getting a Library of Congress control number is free, but you do have to set it up and do it and apply before you publish the book. And after you publish it, you have to send them like you have what, to send two or three hard copies. copies. It's just, just one, one copy. copy. Yeah, as soon as it's published. I'm, oh, and then the others go to the copyright office? No. Yes. Yeah, maybe. And so I think it's worthwhile publishing the CIP data block, uh, which is a cataloging in publication data, which I wonder if any of these books have one. Should I just pick a book at random and see? Yep. Let's see. Hold it up. Benefit of being, Who gets, um, being at a bookstore. Let's who gets see if um, there's a C No, hold on. We've got to see if there's a CIP block. Oh, yeah, there is. This is probably an old one. I think the format's changed a little bit. But it's like, it's this thing at the front which says um, Library of Congress cataloging and publication data, Smith, Nigel, 1958, like the author's name right. includes like where it goes in, where it would go in a library and um, so they libraries know how to catalog it essentially and that's what that's used for and so really it's only if you want your books to be in be able to be in libraries. I prefer to give my books the best start they can in mm. the world. It's like that's a good way to put it. But it yeah. is. I mean, it's like yeah. when you have a child. As polished as you can possibly make yeah, it at that you point. Want to, I want to give it the best start I can, give it the best chance of success. Um, and so I pay for that. I use Five Rainbows. It costs about $79 to do per book. You know, ISBNs, because I know I'm going to publish a lot and because I have my own publishing company, I bought a hundred to begin with because that's, I almost bought a thousand and I thought that was overkill. Mm. I figured a hundred, if I, once I've published a hundred um, or used a hundred ISBNs, because you have one for each format of your book, so hardcover, I'm not, well, if you have a hardcover, which I don't, but um, paperback and then ebooks, so you don't need one for. Amazon for Kindle, right. but if you have your ebook, should probably clarify that for wide, you guys because when I did research, 
they were telling you you needed one for Kindle and you needed one for EPUB because technically they're two they're separate two different versions. files. But then I started looking into like these small presses and the small presses only use one ISBN for ebooks. Yeah. Period. I just so use one. save yourself that ISBN number because that's they're a lot of money. Well, and Kindle doesn't use your ISBN anyway. It uses your Amazon right. mm -hmm. ASIN or something. Yeah. So it's not so even. Don't, yeah. So I just do one for ebook. Mine burned. One for paperback. But still, it's two ISBNs for one for audiobook if you have audiobooks. You know, yeah, yes, but when I did my through. audiobook, because I did it exclusive with ACX, who oh, covers yeah. Amazon, and they cover, um, I'm totally flaking, Audible. Mm. Um, do they have their own number? Yeah, there was no place to put it, mm -hmm. and I think maybe because it's just exclusive yeah, right maybe. now, or but anyway. forever, I don't know. So I figured if I had 50 books out, I would mm. use up my 100 ISBN numbers and then I could yeah. buy some more. Yeah. So 10, you know, one was pointless, 10 didn't seem like enough, I knew I was going to use more than 10, a thousand seemed like an overkill, so I went with 100 and it was $575. Okay. So I, or you can get 10 for like... 295. Is it? Yeah, it's, it's like one for 125, 10 for 295. 100 for 575 and a thousand for about a thousand at least at the time that I bought them right so you know they get less per book create an account now and then they send you email discounts mm. so uh, they send me promos and I'm like I still haven't used the last ones like yeah thanks for the promo so that's what I've spent my money on and then then copywriting your books which is a good idea registering that registering them with the US Copyright Office costs 60 to 85 dollars or something I think it's 50 bucks 50, I don't know I it's 50. I can't remember I did a bunch at once so it was expensive because I drug my heel on that one the only difference when you do your copyright is um, you sign up either as say your publishing house or as yourself as the author um, it's like if you use a pen name, yeah, you can register it under your pen name or your legal name. Uh, Keep in mind if you register it under your legal name, then you get um, more years of coverage. Uh, so it's extended. I think instead of a hundred years past your death, you get is it, it's either past your death or past. Um, the year that you get it. it. Yeah, I think it's past your death. 100 years past death if it's a pen name. If you do it in your legal name, it's 150, I want to say. Huh. So then therefore your, say, relatives will still keep getting... Your descendants and heirs. Yeah, for 150 years before it goes to... Public domain and yeah. people can republish it. What? My, I will be public domain in 150 years? Yeah. <laughs> um, and then there's marketing and advertising, which we actually kind of, we're way over time already. Is you can spend, you know, a lot... Oh, maximum file something reached. That seems bad. Um, you can spend a lot of <laughs> guys got a message yeah, on my phone. Phone. <laughs> um, you spend a lot of money on marketing and advertising or you could not do advertising and you can just spend a lot of time on marketing mm -hmm. so we need to wrap up so next that's, week that's is it. writing groups yes we'll talk about writing groups next week so please join us on July 23rd either we might be live I should have data by then or <laughs> Or just or you grab a VIP to our Come city hang out with us in tsunami. tsunami. If you enjoy this episode, please subscribe to our channel and leave your comments below so that we can we'll give you a shout out in the next episode. So I'm Joanna Bartlett. Julie Don. This is right now, and we will see you next Monday, hopefully. At 11 11. Tsunami. Right, right now. now.